Hey my friends, Sam Haymart for Test Driven TV. Today, something pretty interesting, we pull back the curtain to show you all the hardware under the hood of the all new 2021 Mustang Mach-E. Yeah, that's what's coming up. The Mustang Mach-E is different. While the name might evoke visions of a big block FE series 428 cubic inch V8 under its hood, nothing could be further from the truth. Duh, right? After all, this is 2021 and we're living in a new world. Instead, what you see when you lift the hood of the 2021 Mustang Mach-E is a sea of molded black plastic that hides any inkling that this pony even has a power plant. This Mustang is indeed a horse of a different color. But before peeling back all that plastic, let's take the larger view. The all-new Mustang Mach-E is Ford's first clean sheet of paper dedicated electric vehicle, meaning not one who started out as a gasoline engine model and then turned into an electric. This means it's designed and built completely different. Looking under the skin of its unibody structure, we see that larger than average steel frame rails surround a large flat battery pack that sits entirely under the passenger compartment. The frame is robust because these battery packs are heavy AF and not only need to be held in place, but protected in a crash. This design is great for handling because it makes for a lower center of gravity, but bad for handling because it makes the car heavier and taller overall. Why it's a crossover instead of a sexy coupe like the regular Mustang. Whether you choose rear wheel drive or all wheel drive, at the front is a beefy cast aluminum crossmember that carries all of the Mach-E's electronic control hardware. The Mach-E comes with a variety of powertrain configurations starting with a rear wheel drive only model whose 282 horsepower Borg Warner integrated drive motor unit sits at the rear axle between the two wheels. If you option all-wheel drive, you get a second motor mounted underneath all of that front hardware, which comes in two power levels depending on your model, 67 horsepower in the premium all-wheel drive we have here. A larger motor unit comes up front with the all-powerful GT. In any case, these numbers aren't necessarily cumulative when it comes to combined power ratings. Our all-wheel drive premium is rated at a total system power of 346 horsepower and 428 pound-feet of torque. See, we have a number 428 in all of this drama. How appropriate. But now to the juicy under the hood part. When you pop the hood, you get to see your beautiful 4.7 cubic foot frunk kindly outfitted with divider panels, which increase its baseline uselessness by preventing larger items from being put in it unless you go to the work of removing it, which isn't all that easy. There is a drain down at the bottom too, so you can make an ice chest out of it for those open hood frunk parties. All the plastic cladding around it also gets in your way if you want to do some DIY maintenance. And honestly, Ford really doesn't want you to monkey around in there anyway. This is because you can die of high voltage if you're a dumbass. That said, we removed all of it to show you what's there and refrain from touching anything we shouldn't. Once all the skirting is gone, a world of the new presents itself. We can see now why even if you don't get all-wheel drive, the frunk remains small because the motor itself isn't what's in the way. Up top and center is the aforementioned electronic hardware that manages the many different aspects of charging, converting, and controlling. The largest of the boxes is the charging unit. Atop that is an inverter and also a DC to DC converter that steps the high voltage down to the 12 volt battery system for standard accessories inside and out. All of these items are liquid cooled as are the integrated motor drive units themselves. The result of this is a snake pit of hoses and no less than four separate electric pumps in the front bay that keep it all flowing to the several components. At the front, therefore, is a traditional radiator and electric fan. There are two cooling reservoirs, one which is not all that easily accessed under the semi-permanent skirting which is flowing at the very moment of our shoot as we're charging the car. The other reservoir is up on the front wall, accessible from the maintenance cover, which means it's the one Ford is more comfortable with you monkeying with. Also up at the consumer grade access area is the brake fluid reservoir, which is remotely located from the electronic braking control unit, which is tucked back underneath. The brakes themselves remain hydraulically actuated, but can allow full control and override by the electronic gods. A deep dive below all of this premium liquid cooled hardware is the smaller of the two integrated motor drive units on our premium all wheel drive Mach E, shrouded with thermal and sound deadening blackness. If you have a rear wheel drive only model, this would be just open air under the cross member. Other items of note under the hood include the fully electric AC cooling unit on the passenger side of the hardware cluster. Across all of this is a strut tower brace that, while it might seem a bone to throw to enthusiasts, is really there to keep the structure tight since this thing weighs nearly 5,000 pounds with the extended range battery option and all-wheel drive. 
Lastly, we look at another relic from the past, the 12 volt battery itself, which remains to power all of the interior lighting, infotainment, power accessories, and exterior lighting. To replace the 12 volt battery, all of the plastic cladding must be removed for access. Next to it is the underhood fuse box for heavy duty items, which Ford has hidden from consumer grade DIYers. Another fuse box is located under the passenger side dash for most of the interior accessories and systems. Last but not least, and accessible even with all of the safety shrouding in place, is the windshield washer reservoir. It's the only serviceable item, in fact, when all the dressing's in place. And you'll note we didn't show you the rear motor unit because it's not accessible from above. Man, they don't make it easy getting into that stuff. They, they just, they don't want you in there. 10 bolts to get that tub out of there and you had to pull access covers off to get to the bolts and then all that other plastic. They just don't want you in there. That's the bottom line. Anyway, it was fun to show you all this stuff. I love getting into the nuts and bolts, especially on the latest, greatest stuff like this. If you want to see our latest video, click right there, or better yet, click there and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Either way, stay tuned.